guys welcome back to my channel and if you're new thank you for joining the jasmine show it's your girl jazz coming to you live and direct with another video so as you can see in the title this video is going to be all about college excuse me i'm gonna be giving tips advice um answering questions and all that good stuff this video has been requested by some of my senior friends like some of my friends that are still seniors in high school i know it's getting closer to may and that's when they graduate and it's normal to feel not ready and uncomfortable and scared because college is a big step and it is not easy i'm not even gonna cap it's really not like it'll sometimes make you want to just pull your daggone hair out literally but hopefully with these tips and these advice that i've been learning on the go because i'm only a freshman so i've been learning this you know to be these tips hopefully will help friends anybody who's watching this whatever i hope this helps let me know if you need anything else in the comments if you have my number my socials whatever i'm here to help so before i get started i know y'all are probably like something is different about her i just got highlights yes i know y'all are probably like wait a minute it's me it's still me i'm still jasmine it's just jasmine 2.0 so yes i got highlights for the first time ever i just got them just now like probably like two hours ago from my hairdresser she did an amazing job um my hair is naturally dark brown but i just got like some caramel brown highlights and yeah i love it and i got a little trim you know team healthy hair period so with that disclaimer out of the way cleared up we're just gonna get this video popping and rolling. So the organized person that I am, and also since I record on my phone, I wrote the questions and the tips slash advice down on flashcards. And just so I could be a little more organized and don't have to like keep saying um or something like to think about an answer, you know? Cause I have a habit of saying um. I know I'm not the only one. I have a habit of saying um and like a lot when I'm like trying to think. Did I just say it then? I don't know. But yeah, we're just gonna get this video popping and rolling with question one. Okay. Question one is, what's the difference between associates and bachelor's degree? Believe it or not, I just learned that this year because I had a call with my advisor about scheduling like fall classes and summer classes and stuff. And I had no idea the difference between them. I know, I know they were different, but I didn't know like the real like definition, you know what I'm saying? So now that I learned it, I'm so glad that, you know, I wasn't the only one who didn't know. So if you hear some like rumbling around, that's my dog, by the way. But um, the difference between associates and bachelors. Associates, that's your first two years. So I'm in my, so trying to get my associate's degree now since I'm in my first year. And, um, that's just like when you have your your major that you pick, you'll have some classes of that, but then you got the English and the math and the science, the stuff that you kind of are just like, this is not my major, why am I doing it? I did this in high school, it's needed. So then when you get to your third and fourth year, that's where your bachelor's come in, where English, math and science and all that extra stuff is out of the way, you've done it already. Now it's time to focus on your major. Now you're really cracking down on your major and the classes that you need to take to graduate and to use the, that information further along in your life. So that's the difference. Okay, that was kind of, wow, that was a long explanation. I talk, am I talking too fast? Why am I asking y'all like y'all to respond? Anyway, excuse me. My dog is acting crazy. Mm. All right. Question two. How are the professors? That's like kind of like tricky because I could say like for my fall semester, I only had about one teacher I didn't like and that was like my math teacher and that's not in it you know how most students they have like petty reasons for not liking teacher no this was like a real reason so as you know um well if you didn't know I've said it in my last video about like my first week of college that I'm on online since I am a uh, high risk for COVID I'm a type 1 diabetic so I do have a disease 
And so I'm all online and I've been all online since I first started. And my math teacher would just never, he would never tell us what to do. He would, you know, just post stuff and think that we just magically know it. We would have to email him 24 seven. He wouldn't get back to us until two days. And then he had the nerve when we had a final, like the final was coming up in two days. We haven't studied or had a study guide for that whole time. We had a whole week to study in the study guide, but we didn't get the study guide. So how are we supposed to study, you know? So we had to email like the board of math, like administrators of math. And they were like, basically, you know, if he doesn't get it together, he's gonna be fired. And I was like, I don't wanna get a man fired, but I'm also, this is my career. Like this is my college degree and classes that I'm talking about. This is my life basically. So if you have to get fired for me to get my work done, then so be it. But at the end, he got it together, and we all passed, which is really good. Um, I can say this semester, the only teacher, the only professor that I don't really care for is my English. He, you know, it's just one of those teachers that just when they don't put a grade in, and when they don't put a grade in, like you've done the work and they just don't put a grade in yet, they put a zero, and then that shows up on your grade book like, why put a zero like just put in a like you just haven't got to it yet you know it just it makes me nervous i don't like to see a zero especially if i know i did the work you know what i'm saying like who wants that nobody so yeah but overall the professors are just a little more they make you be a little more independent high school i would say they make you independent but high school and to be honest like high school kind of holds your hand high school is kind of just you know they give you that little push, like that little holding hand push, but then college is just like, no, y'all in the big leagues now. We, You can ask questions, but some things you should already know and be accustomed to, you get what I'm saying? So, yeah, overall, they're not that bad, but there's always a few bad apples. My dog has this thing about biting his little pee pads that he be peeing on when I can't take him outside and I, that's why I looked away so my bad okay so question three Mila <gasps> this dog question three what's it like to be a freshman um it's kind of I don't know it's it doesn't feel like anything like at first when I first started it was kind of nerve-wracking because I was like oh my gosh you know I'm not used to this type of fast-paced type of thing I mean obviously nobody's used to college because you've never been and I feel like I don't care how many times high school says that this is to get you ready for college you won't be ready until you get in there like I just feel like yes it's great that high school tries to introduce some things like yeah this is gonna be in college but I feel like once you have that experience, you're not gonna be ready until you're thrown in with the sharks and having to fend for yourself and stuff like that. So yeah, it's not that bad, but when I first began, I did feel a little nervous because I was like, you know, it's bad enough that I felt like my senior year was taken away from me with COVID and then I didn't really have time to fully prepare and say like, you know, and get used to the fact that, okay, I'm really done with high school. like college is the next chapter for me now I need to mentally prepare because I just know it doesn't matter like how long that break was for us to leave school and then get ready for the next school year with COVID going on I still wasn't mentally prepared for college and not saying I wasn't like ready like I didn't think I could do it but I just knew that okay this is going to be a whole nother beast and I get that other people were telling me it's going to be a whole nother beast but again once it's easier for somebody to say that and then you'd be like, oh, okay, not bad until you get thrown in it. And then you'd be like, ooh, they weren't joking. Again, if you hear my dog, I'm sorry. So, yep, that's answer question three. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I really hope. I'm just trying to get the answers out. You know what I'm saying? All right, so question four, what's a typical day like for me during school? So, I like to have a routine, even though I'm all online, I like to have a schedule like of treating like I'm actually waking up to go to school. I like to wake up at 8.30 every morning, Monday through Fridays. Um, 
Yeah, 8.30, the latest 9, because um, like fall semester, I had a certain day to wake up because some of my classes, they really started on the exact time. You had to get on a Zoom call. This semester, I don't have to get on any Zoom calls. They just post the work and um, you need to get it done. But yeah, I try to wake up at 8.30, the latest of 9. Um, you know, take my dog out, sit down, um, look in my planner of what I have to do. And basically just, if it's some, like, if it's a lot of stuff I have to do, I like to try to take a break at like 12 and then get right back to it in 30 minutes. So like come right back at like 12.30. So yeah, that's normally what the day is like for me. Cause I don't take showers in the morning, I take showers at night. Cause I like to be, although like sometimes I do, cause sometimes like, you know, I really need to wake up like cold water on my face isn't just gonna do anything. That That's like if I'm dead tired. Cause you know, I'm really one of those, I don't know why I'm like this, but I'm one of those people that I could go to sleep at like I'm two, three or four. Like I was like that in high school and knowing I had to wake up at like six something or seven something. Milo, sorry seven something and had to go to high school like had to go to school so i don't know i'm a night owl but my little no this dog is crazy he's got to work my nerves y'all don't get a puppy don't get a puppy take it from me and if you do get a girl i feel like girls are a lot more calmer okay so that was the answer to question four. We're gonna move on to question five. How much time do you spend studying? So I like to spend, ooh, excuse me. I like to spend at least 15 to 30 minutes depending on what it is. Um, if it is something that's kind of, you know, I kind of grasp it. You know, those type of things that you don't really have to study, but like you wanna read over anyway to make sure that you really understand that's like my 15 minute thing now if it's something i really have to study i'll do 30 minutes or more if i have to so yeah um next question is do you have class on weekends mm, i won't say class but like fall semester i did have a class on saturday um and that was kind of annoying because, you know, like on the weekends, you don't want to have any schoolwork or anything. But with college, you best believe that if you don't have class on weekends, you almost likely have something due, like a quiz or a paper or something that's due on a weekend. You will never, like you can say bye-bye to your weekends, basically. Not to be like, you know, trying to scare you or like trying to tell you you can't have fun, but it's just like, you know, you are gonna have some work on the weekends at some point that you're gonna have to do. Whether it's quiz, essay, whatever, they don't care. It's like these teachers don't even have a life. But, you know, it's whatever. Beauty of college, you know? So, question seven is, what's your favorite class this semester? My favorite class would have to be, honestly, Although I don't like my actions of my teacher, I do like English just because I know English is my forte and I've always done good in English classes, 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 whether it's like literature, anything like that. I love to read. I love to write. Um, I'm kind of shaky with writing papers or typing papers, but I'll do it. And so, um, yeah, I really like English right now my forte it's always been my forte so next question were you able to take most of your first choices of classes now college like when you meet with your advisors and stuff like um they do give you recommendations but you really get to pick like what you want now they'll tell you like this doesn't fit your major you don't need it so don't take it um but they do mostly let you pick what you want to do now um sometimes you really do have to jump up jump on it because those classes could get filled really fast and sometimes you get lucky enough where nobody really cares to join that class and you can take your time but when i say take your time don't wait like till like the last minute last minute like 
you could take like depending on the date like sometimes it takes me two or three days to decide when I'm talking to my advisor and I talk to I get it's my stuff like my career too in my college life but I still do like to talk to my mom about things like that because I know she won't steer me wrong I know my advisors are so, supposed to be trustworthy and stuff too but you know you can never go wrong with your mom you can never go wrong okay you can never go wrong so yeah um moving on question question why am i talking like this question nine how big are your classes so i wrote this down because i did not know obviously off the top of my brain so my english class including me has 24 students my science class including me has 25 and my fitness class and i'm pretty sure it's only this big because it's online but i'm not sure but um it's 53 students including me so that's like my biggest class but i feel like it's because we're all online so i don't know it could be it could be not but i just know that that's a big number so yep um next question is did anything surprise you um i feel like what surprised me maybe was the fact that and this i think i'm gonna discuss this too and like the little tips and advice thing i remember writing something like this down that um you know i'm one of the i'm one of those people that i procrastinate because i know i'm good at it i procrastinate but i know i'm gonna get it done like and so that one time i don't think it really was procrastination it was just you know i don't need to study this like i didn't study for stuff like this in high school i'll be fine no like i remember i bummed that quiz and i was like what i was so confident but I remember like crying to my mom and I was like, I can't believe I bummed it. Like I failed. And she was like, well, did you study? And I was honest. Like I was like, no, I didn't feel the need to. And she was like, well, you know, next time you need to study because college is a whole nother thing. You may think that like, you know, in high school, I don't have to study for certain things like that. But college love to throw, colleges love to throw curveballs. Like love to throw curveballs in their quizzes all the time. So yeah you need to be prepared for that and that's going to be like i said in like one of those tips and advice things that i have i wrote something down like that so yep i think we have like four more questions and then we're going to move on to the tips slash advice so question 11 is is it really like the movies where someone gives you a tour of the school the first day um yeah I mean, probably not the first day. I feel like you would go to orientation, like, I feel like you go to a tour before the school year starts, or maybe sometimes it is during the first day. I don't know, it depends on what college. But yeah, they do give you a tour. Um, they do have orientation too, where you sit in classes and you learn about where everything is and stuff like that. So yeah, I would say it's like the movies. Um, they definitely do give you a tour of the first day if you want it. So, um, question 12 is, is it true you can't have cars? Mm, I, I'm, I'm not really sure about this one. I think I know for, like, I won't say a fact, but I think I know that, like, for freshmen, it's not really required for you to have a car or they don't let you have a car. Like, freshmen, I don't know if it's freshmen and sophomores. Maybe it's just freshmen. I don't know. But I know some schools, they don't let freshmen have cars i don't know why but maybe because like y'all are like the crabs of the campus y'all are new but i don't know y'all i'm a freshman I'm saying y'all like i'm old anyway um question 13 what's the hardest part about college i think the hardest part for me is maintaining a balance of social life time for yourself and classwork um i'm a big social person i well i have a balance sometimes i don't like being around a bunch of people sometimes i do but i will say that my most def i'm most definitely a social butterfly i can talk to anybody i'm not shy um i'm very outspoken i can be loud um but it's just hard to kind of find that balance sometimes of i really want to go and do this but i know i have this classwork or this quiz or something do and it's kind of hard that you know if you don't have that type of grounded uh, 
what's the word grounded mentality that was a good word um then it's going to be a little tricky for you like for me i can honestly say and even my mom or some family members would say that i'm very mature for my age i've always i don't know whether it's like how i was raised but i've just always just been the type that i get my work done before i go play like i would feel more comfortable if you know like you would just feel more comfortable if you're going out and you don't have this burden of, oh, I have this quiz due at this time. I have this, like, you know, I like to not have any burden and be like, look, I did my work. Now this is my reward. I can go out. So I think the hardest thing overall is, like, maintaining that balance of social life, college work, and then, like, time for yourself. So, but you can do it. Like, if I can do it, you can do it. Anybody else can do it. Anybody else did it before me, so... You know, it's not impossible. You just have to have that mentality. You have to really know how you are, uh, like, scholarly and socially. You have to know how you are. You have to have that balance. Or I feel like if you want, let one slack or the other, you're going to regret it. So, um, yeah. All right, last question. How do you get on professor's good side? I have no idea. I feel like the only thing that I can answer to that is to do the work and don't be slacking. Like, and don't be one of those people that they always have to follow behind. Like, what I'm saying is don't be one of those people that you know they have to constantly, like, hold your hand. Now, one thing is about it, you know how high school they'll be telling you, like, you know, this is due, this is due, like, then they'll send, like, text messages, like, I get alerts on my phone, something is two days away, this is blah, blah, blah. Um, they don't email you and be like, make sure you get this done. They do send a reminder like that, like, hey, this is two days away or whatever days away. But if you don't do it, that's on you. And, um... Yeah, so I could say to be on a professor's good side, I would say to just, you know, really show that you work hard. And if you do have questions, ask. Don't wait till last minute. I know, I don't know if it's every teacher, but I know, like, teachers must not like that. Like, wait until last minute to ask for help. Because that's just, I would get annoyed at that. So, yeah. Alright. Moving on to tips. So tip number one is to always try and connect with other people in your class, like online or not. Um, Y'all all are there for the same reason, to get a degree, to pass the class. Um, and it's nothing wrong with getting a little help. Sometimes, you know, teachers overcomplicate explanations. And sometimes, you know, you need a student to kind of break it down to you, student to student. And I find that that helps me a lot when I get into classrooms or classes, I go to the class list and sometimes we have like these discussions and if another person, you know, speaks like me or has the same like ideas like me, I try to connect with them and just, you know, be like, look, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. If you need help, I'll help you. If I need help, hopefully you help me. Or sometimes it's just good to have friends like that have connections, you know what I'm saying? So online or not don't be shy to connect that's important so um tip number two um if you are a good procrastinator this is what i was talking about that i wrote down before if you're a good procrastinator and normally don't have to study for stuff me um scratch that you need to change that because teachers in college love to throw extra stuff in and that will bite you in the butt later on so take notice to this advice i'm telling you I don't care how good you are at procrastinating. I don't care how good. You're gonna need this advice because all of them love to throw curveballs. Cause obviously, you know, college teachers aren't stupid. They know that most of the students, they know that their work is hard and they know that their works can seem to students like busy work. But trust me, when you feel like that, sometimes it really is not busy work. That stuff is really important. You're gonna need to know it. So take heed to that advice. All right, tip number three. Um, I always write in blue ink if I know it's something I'm gonna study. I don't know why blue ink just pops out at me and sticks in my head. I've been doing that since freshman year of high school when like 
I forgot who told me that. Maybe it was like one of my cousins or something or my friends. I can't remember. But I wrote in blue ink one time and I was studying for something. I remember it was probably like government or something like that. And I don't know why, but blue just stuck out to me. Like it really just stayed in my head. The I don't know, maybe it was because how I studied, but I don't know. From this till this day, blue ink, if I know I have something I'm really gonna study, then I use blue ink. So maybe that could help somebody. Try it out, let me know. Try it out, don't let me know. I don't know. You're welcome, I guess. I don't know, but yeah. Maybe you can try it out. Um Alright, I think this is the last tip. Nope, we got one more after this one. So, tip number four, a way to get the info in your head faster, like in my opinion, is to not write everything out when you're taking notes. Try and break it down into like main parts if you can. Because that's kind of like, you know, you're putting too much information that's not needed. And then, um, I, in my opinion, I would say like read it three times. Um, I would say, in my opinion, read it three times, say it three times, and sometimes write it out again. Um, also, don't cram. If it's a lot to study, like split it up. Do 15 to 30 minutes for one half, and then maybe do it again for the next half. Or you can wait until the next day, but it really all depends like on your mind and like when the exam date is. Obviously, you don't want to wait till the next day if your exam is that day. So, yep. And the last tip... Um, just be yourself and have fun. College is challenging, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy life. It's a bittersweet growing up moment, but if you stick to who you are and work hard, you'll do just fine. Also, if you forget to do an assignment, don't stress it. Yes, it's important, but and even college students forget things. We are human too. And speaking of that, for an example, I had an English assignment due yesterday, and I wrote it down, but I didn't think about, like, I don't know how I just didn't do it. I don't know. I think time, that's that one of those things of maintaining a balance of time slips past you sometimes. And I missed it. Um, it, it got dropped from my grade. But still, you know, it's the simple fact that I knew I could have done it and I wrote it down. But, you know, you can't really stress it. It happened. You move on and you try to do better next time. That's all you can do. You're human. We're all human. We all make mistakes. Not the end of the world. Move on and, you know, brush it off and continue on with your day. So that is all the questions that I have and all the tips and advice that I have. So we're just going to end this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this helped someone I really do because I know how I know what you're going through I know how you feel and um yeah you're not alone you can do it college is bittersweet but just think if you can make it through high school you can make it through college not many people can even make it through high school think about that so yeah the, if you ever feel discouraged, you know, just think if other people could do it, why can't I? You know, you're no different. They're human. They didn't have special effects either. So, you know, it's life. You either push through it or you don't. Make it or break it. Risk it to get the biscuit. I'm going to stop. But, um, yes, thank you guys for watching again. Thank you for the questions, for people who gave me questions. Um, thank you for everyone who requested this, like, especially my senior friends. I hope this really helps you. Um, and I'm not really sure when the next video will be or what it will be about. I have, like, a few options that I'm still choosing between. So, yeah, stay tuned for that. I would definitely let you guys know. And make sure you like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you won't miss any of my future videos. And I'm out.